Hey, what's up? And welcome to day 13 of the 100 Days of Code video series. Today, I've got a pretty fun project build. We're gonna be building out a Quill text editor. Quill is a powerful, rich text editor, and you can find out more by going to quilljs.com. I'll also leave a link down below if you'd like to check it out. What's really cool about Quill is that it gives you all the awesome formatting features you'd expect from a professional editor app. And it's very simple to set up. So simple that you can even do it in just HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we can create this today. So let's get right into it. The first thing we'll do is create an index.html file and set it up with some boilerplate code. Then I'll link up a style sheet and then create it. Next, I'll link up a JavaScript file and create that as well. Once that is done, I'll link up another style sheet. This is the CDN link to the Quill styles. Be sure to check down below for this link. And I'll also do the same thing for the JavaScript CDN. Once that's done, let's write some basic HTML. I'll create a wrapper for our entire application, then a div with the class of editor. Our editor will live inside of this. So then I'll write a div with the ID of editor container, and this is needed as part of the Quill documentation. This is where the actual Quill editor will live. Next, I'll create two buttons, one to preview our HTML and one to save. We'll write some logic for the HTML preview later, but you'll have to write your own save logic to save the data to a database or something later on if you want. Next, I'll create one more container, and this is for our HTML output. I'll give it an ID and a class of output, and that's pretty much everything for the HTML. Next, I'll paste in all the CSS that I wrote to style this up nicely. It's important to note that the actual Quill editor is styled for you via the CDN style sheet that we imported earlier. The styles I have written are purely for the buttons and the output window. If you want to copy these styles, feel free to do so by checking out the GitHub repo for this project. It's also listed down below. Now let's write some JavaScript. Let's create some variables. We'll need one for our preview button and for our output container. Next, let's set up a variable for toolbar options. For now, let's leave this as an empty array, but we'll pass this array to our Quill instance in a moment. So let's create that Quill instance. We can write const Quill equals new Quill, and we'll pass the ID that we set up in the HTML of editor container. Now let's write up some options for our editor. The default theme we'll be using is their snow theme. Check out their documentation for other themes that they offer. Let's create a modules key in our options object, and we'll supply it with an object. Let's create a key for toolbar, and for the value, we'll give it our array that we just named called toolbar options. If we hit save and check out the browser, you won't really see anything. We have our Quill editor, but we don't really see any options in the toolbar. And that's because we need to supply the items that we want in our toolbar. This means we can create a toolbar perfect for what we want. I'm gonna paste in some of my favorite options, but feel free to read the Quill documentation and build your perfect toolbar setup yourself. So I've added some headers, some text utilities like bold, italic, underline and strike, text colors and background colors, a few list options, block quotes and code blocks, media such as links, images and videos, and lastly, alignment. If we hit save, we now see our toolbar fill up with options. And if we give it a try, you can see it just works right out of the box. How simple is that? So what's really cool is we actually do have access to the rendered HTML that it creates. Let me show you how to access it. Let's first set up an event listener on the preview button, listening for clicks. Inside the event listener, we'll create a variable named content that's equal to quill.root.innerHTML. That holds the rendered HTML. Let's add a class of active to our output container. And this is just a class that I set up in the CSS. By default, the width of our output window is set to zero and adding a class of active will just give it more space to show the output. So after about 1200 milliseconds, we can populate the output's text content with the content variable that we set up that holds the rendered HTML. And that's it. Let's check it out in the browser. So in our new Quill editor, I'll create a simple ordered list. And I'll say I want to learn JavaScript, learn Python, learn data science, and of course, eat a sandwich. And I think eating a sandwich is pretty important, so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit preview HTML, and as you can see, a menu on the right opens up with all the HTML that builds out what we wrote on the left. Using Quill is extremely easy, just using a couple of CDN links. 
feel free to clone down this repo, add some more features to this, maybe make it look a little bit better. And as always, with anything in the 100 Days of Code video series, if you submit APR and it doesn't break the code base, I'm going to merge it in. I'll see you guys on day 14. Until then, have fun and happy coding.